that Fox News has contributed to what is happening, which is basically the alienation of a key constituency in American politics. What we used to call moderate Republicans, swing voters who were once persuadable, but a lot of them have just now become basically Democrats. That is the thesis of a new piece by Ben Jacobs in The New Republic. Are never Trumpers actually just Democrats now? And the author of that piece, Ben Jacobs, joins me now. Ben, I really enjoyed the piece, and I was reading it thinking of, of what we were talking about special elections yesterday. What's your basic thesis to the piece? Uh, the basic thesis is that Donald Trump has provoked this great realignment in American politics, that for all the attention we spent uh, after 2016 going to the you know mythical Rust Belt diners in Ohio and Pennsylvania, where there are Obama-Trump voters, there are a lot of now Romney-Biden voters in the suburbs, in places like outside Phoenix, outside Atlanta, and that if you go to the Lululemons, if you go to the Whole Foods there, there are a lot of people who were once you know traditional country club Republicans who are now voting for Democrats in most races, not all races, but certainly for president, for U.S. Senate, as we've seen in Georgia, in Arizona, and starting to move down ballot as well. Yeah, this is what's key, right? So we've known that there are these swing voters. Um, but one of the things you say is the endurance of never Trump Republicans means that a not insignificant number of George W. Bush and Mitt Romney voters from pundits on down to suburban parents are now part of the Democratic base and participating in party primaries. That what you're saying is it's not just the voting behavior. It's actually like a deeper partisan association affiliation that's happening. Like these people are becoming Democrats, self-identified, their voting behavior, and, and, and even to a certain extent how they might start seeing issues. Yes, that's, that's precisely right, you know, that and you're seeing this impact in data that the voters who are leaving the Republican Party are more likely to be pro-choice, they're more likely to be pro-immigration reform, and that you're seeing this sort of rearrangement of the parties, that these voters are also disproportionately well-educated, and that you are seeing a resorting of these voters as they approaching these issues, and as Donald Trump in particular, you know, has become this sort of repellent figure. And some of this was happening already, that this is the analogy I use, that there's sort of tectonic forces, that there's a slow, steady shift, that some of these areas were creeping slowly towards Democrats. But Donald Trump just put it on steroids in the same way that the upper Midwest and parts of the upper Midwest have gone towards Republicans in the past decade. These prosperous, well-educated suburban areas have really zoomed in the other direction. What do you think it means for the political fortunes of the two coalitions? And what did you hear from folks when you went and reported this out? Well, what it means for the political coalitions is that you now starting to have this sort of much, you know, stronger cultural divide, that the cleavages are based on education, the cleavages are based on some of the social issues we're seeing, um, and that it really creates this this sort of new divide in, in terms of the parties that traditionally, you know, you think about uh, special elections, that uh, lower turnout elections traditionally were supposed to favor Republicans, because Republican voters were traditionally more affluent, better educated, and more likely to vote in Democrats you needed to persuade. As the coalitions have shifted, Democrats are performing better in midterms, performing better in special elections, because the, they are now the more of the high propensity voters. And you have the shift in you know, voters there. They're still in between that. You know, there are examples in the articles of folks who are frustrated with Trump, frustrated with, you know, some of them are frustrated with Biden. And there's still sort of a spectrum to which, you know, this is not a clear conversion, that this is not an issue in which you have voters who have suddenly flipped on a switch because they're repelled by Trump that you have. In the area I went to, a lot of people voted for Joe Biden, who voted for Raphael Warnock in the Senate race, but then also voted for Republican Brian Kemp Brian for Kemp, governor yeah. in 2022. Yeah. And that, you know, they're looking for normal Republicans. And if they're crazy Republicans, they're going straight Democrat. Yeah, this is this is interesting. That, that point you made, I want to just linger on this for a moment, because it's something I'm, I'm sort of obsessed with. For as long as I've covered politics, the belief is, higher turnout helps Democrats, right? That Democrats have a higher percentage of sort of lower propensity voters, that they have the harder time turning folks out. The Republicans have higher propensity voters, the ones that show up for midterms, and that's why you got 94, and that's why you got 2010. The na changing nature of the coalitions ch is changing that, and we're seeing it in these special elections. I also think it's really interesting because you get to this point where you're sort of, you've got um, an interesting tension between one's principles and what might be best. So like in Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro just introduced automatic voter registration. I think that's great. I support that. I want people to vote, no matter which party it helps. But the idea that 
high levels of turnout automatically help Democrats just might not be born out anymore. And it might also make Republicans start to rethink what they've been doing in stopping people from going to the ballot box. That, that's certainly a possibility, but it's also so much of this has become tribal, that so much of these attitudes are rooted in tribalism, that there's so much of this is about cultural signifiers, and that that's become part of this, too, that, you know, if you think about how much Donald Trump has changed politics, which is part of this, is that just about everything has been politicized, what beer you drink, what uh, sports you watch is political, and that some of this is not about sort of the broader electoral logic, but it's, there's a symbolism there that, that we've seen in politics throughout, which is part of the reason why Brian Kemp won, that it wasn't that Brian Kemp was a liberal Republican. No one would confuse him no, with the second coming of Nelson Rockefeller, but because he broke with Trump on the elections and because the stylistic differences, he was perceived as more moderate, and that made the difference, and that helped Republicans down the ticket, too, that all the state Republicans, that you had Trump endorsing election deniers who benefited from the same wave as you did Brad Raffensperger, who testified before the January 6th committee and was one of the key figures in stopping the efforts to overturn the election, that it creates this branding and this cultural signifiers that's more than the policy nuances. That's a really good point. It's a great piece in The New Republic by Ben Jacobs. Thank you very much.